Hello there, Cecily Mistrosh here. Um, I want to talk to you today about getting a guitar that suits you. I'm talking about the size, the scale length, um, and um, the tone woods and things like that. And I'm not going to get too technical about this if I can. Um, here's my dreadnought. This was the dreadnought I was playing on stage last night. Big and powerful. Um, this is a 12 fret dreadnought which is not the most common shape in the world, but I found, after playing 14 fret dreadnoughts for a long, long time, that this was better suited for my hands and my body. But it's still got the same sort of width and the same sort of depth. So I'm sitting here and look where my shoulder is. My shoulder's up, that shoulder's up there, this one's down here. And so, while I'm sitting, my spine is bent. Yeah, and after a while, that gets uncomfortable. A lot of people on the various forums um, grumble about um, shoulder problems, getting over uh, the guitar. This doesn't have to be a problem. If you want to play a dreadnought or a jumbo, they're not really designed for playing seated. They are rhythm instruments for playing in a combo, yeah? But before that, there was an awful lot of R&D gone into uh, the design of guitars by, um, by Martin particularly, but also by Gibson. I have here a 1924 Martin catalogue. And on page six, it describes the uses for their different models and the sizes. And let me tell you, they used to do a size two, which is like the model 217, all mahogany guitar, which comes up, tiny little guitar, but beautiful. It was called um, the amateur model. Um, and it says in here somewhere, for general knockabout use. Hmm. Um, and the size O, which was a concert, that's for playing to an audience. The size double O, which is this kind of size, for playing uh, it's a grand concert, and the triple O, which was the largest Martin guitar you could get from 1902 up until uh, 1929. Um, that was an auditorium. Now what that means is it was considered big enough and loud enough to play seated to a large theater audience, unamplified, if I didn't say that before. Um, so, let's have a look at the possibilities of a smaller guitar. This is a Waterloo by Collings, which is made to emulate the Kalamazoo, which was the budget line of Gibson. Um, this is an all-around smaller body, but it's not lacking in tone or volume. And it's got a maple neck, but I'll come back, uh, maple uh, body, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Tone woods. Tone woods, um, there's an awful lot of conversation about this. Generally speaking, they are made of spruce. And there's all sorts of different spruces, which I won't go into now. Um, they are also made of cedar. They can also be made of mahogany and probably other things. Um, they all work. Don't get too hung up, especially if you're on a budget. Don't get too hung up by the tone woods. The backs and sides, traditionally mahogany or rosewood. Um, but also, like this one, um, maple, which was the preferred tone wood for um, the backs and sides of jazz guitars because it gave great projection. <laughs> Not necessarily a f the fullest possible tone, but it projected well. Um, a lot of the fine jazz guitars produced by Gibson were actually made of birch and very few people could tell the difference. Birch is quite a cheap wood. Um, 
I want to talk a little bit about scale. When the Dreadnoughts and the Triple O's came out, Martin extended their standard scale of 24.9 to 25.4 for the larger instruments. When Gibson brought out their Jumbo in competition to the Dreadnought, which is quite a different design, quite a different strutting arrangement, but um, had a similar volume, cubic capacity, they decided on a shorter scale of um, 24 and 3 quarters, sometimes 24 and 7 eighths. I think it tended to vary depending on where they were built. Kalamazoo or Nashville or Montana. Someone that details that in more in great and confusing detail in another video. Um, so it's a short scale, not a long scale, short scale or a standard scale. 25 and a half, 25.4 is regarded as a standard scale. Um, anything smaller is regarded as a shorter scale. That's all you need to know. What are the advantages of a short scale? If you've got really small hands, it might be a benefit. Um, if, if you're buying for someone younger who isn't fully grown, it might be a benefit. Standard scale gives you a little bit more punch, a little bit more tension in the strings. Fretboard width. After 1934, when the Dreadnoughts and Jumbos came out, the guitar changed its use from being essentially an extension of the Spanish guitar with steel, but with steel strings to a rhythm instrument. And so most of the people that were playing rhythm, or many of the people that were playing rhythm, were banjo players who had to adjust and they were used to thin necks because they only had four strings and um, they, were, they were just hammering out those chords. So the thinner neck came out. Thinner necks are now used in many things, although I, Mar I think Martin Dreadnoughts are going out to one and three quarters rather than one and eleven sixteenths, which is far too thin for me. But there are wider necks available, especially if you're prepared to go for a 12 fret design the pre-1930s design. Still around, still being made by various um, manufacturers um, at high price points and the lower price points. Look for them. Um, so the width of a fretboard is typically measured by nut size. This one is 1 and 13 sixteenths, um, which is an eighth wider than 1 and 11 sixteenths, which is important for me and the string spacing. This is more important about how you're going to use the guitar. Uh, this is two and three eighths, uh, and that is the distance between the two outside strings, or the distance between the centers of the two outside strings. Um, smaller guitars designed more for finger style. will probably have a wider string spacing, the one designed essentially for rhythm, which might have a narrower one. Uh, neck profiles are also important to consider because there's a choice in those too. They can be a C profile or like this, a modified V. So it's a V, but it's um, truncated a little bit and rounded there. Older guitars used to come to a point, which weren't very comfy. Uh, Gibson styles tend to be a perfect round, yeah, and called a C profile for obvious reasons. If you're buying a guitar, if you're a beginner, or you're buying a cheap guitar and you've got built-in electrics, just bear in mind that if you're, whatever you're paying for that guitar, you're paying far less for the acoustic quality of the guitar because you're buying the electrics. When you start learning to play or when you're just playing at home, do you really need electrics in it? If you find that later you do want to have it bugged up, then take the guitar back to where you bought it or to a technician somewhere and have a pickup of your choice put in. It's very easy. Um, but buy an acoustic guitar for the acoustic qualities and your comfort. So there's an enormous amount of choices. It took me ages to find the sort of guitar that suited me best, which happened to be this, being a 12 fret, wider fretboard, um, and um, it, doesn't do quite so much damage to that as some others might do. 
but I play it mainly standing. When I'm noodling at home, a double O, which takes light strings rather than medium strings. Could still be played with a pick. That's all I wanted to say, so I hope you find that interesting. Ask me for more questions below, always happy to answer them, or um, ask me other questions and maybe I'll make another video about them. So, if you have been, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.